Hey guys, welcome back to Crafting with Cardboard. I'm Mr. Waxman and I'm going to be showing you how to make some fun easy crafts while we're all staying home. As you can probably tell by the scenery, I'm back in Boston. And as you may already know, this will be the last episode of Crafting with Cardboard for this current school year. Uh, and because of that, this episode is going to be a little different. We will still be making something and we will still be checking in on Sam. Uh, but before we do that, I wanted to take a moment to talk more about freedom, about uh, the Black Lives Matter protests, and about how those are related. Um, but rather than saying it myself, here are some of our amazing Up Academy Hall and fifth graders reading a letter that they wrote to the mayor of Boston, Marty Walsh. Dear Mayor Marty Walsh, we are the fifth grade scholars of Up Academy Holland. We are the next generation and we are going to make the world a better place together. We are the next ones to change the world. We are powerful people and we will never stand down. We are writing this email to you because we want to change the rights for everyone and make a change in our community. We want to feel safe. We want to identify social advantages and disparities that affect race within our community. An issue that is affecting my community is racial injustice. This is affecting me because it makes me scared for my future and when I grow up. I could be standing on the sidewalk and be killed because I'm black. People are dying at the hands of cops because of their race. I don't want to feel threatened every time I walk out of my door. When I see a police car, I feel unsafe. This is why people are protesting and rioting. We have had enough. For these reasons, we are asking you to make sure that cops see people for who they are and what they, and not just their race. I heard until we change the laws that police are going to continue doing what they did to George Floyd to other people. How can, how can you help to make sure that police officers have a positive relationship with the community? This would help them because it would build trust between the community and the police officers that are supposed to serve them. We are asking you to make to help us make sure that the police are not the reason why minorities are afraid to leave their houses. Lastly, laws need to prevent police officers from turning off their body cameras and make it a, a, a requirement for the police officers to be really trained on how to avoid racial profiling. We are paying attention to your next move and want to see that you hear us loud and clear. Up Academy Holland, fifth grade class of 2020. So powerful. I am so proud of all those fifth grade students for being brave enough and um, having such amazing words to say. I really hope that uh, Marty Walsh considers them carefully because they are definitely from the heart, which means that they're true. Um, if you want to get involved, if you want to do something to make a change, just like those uh, awesome students, you can go online to find ways to help. Emails, letters, petitions, protests, um, these are all great ways to make a change or to get involved uh, as long as your parents are doing it with you or as long as they say that it's okay. Now let's get cracking on our project. Because this is our last project of the year and you guys will have all summer long to create artwork, uh, instead of doing one project today, I thought I would show you a bunch of different tips and tricks for working with our favorite material, cardboard, uh, so that you can make any kind of art that you want, um, knowing all these different kind of different ways to work with it, okay? Okay, first I'm gonna show you a few different ways to attach your cardboard, okay? Um, and I'm going to be mostly using scissors, uh, pencils, and uh, the cardboard that I have, as well as this, uh, this is a cutting mat. This is basically just like a cutting board um, that has lines on it um, that you can cut into. I'm also gonna be using an X-Acto knife uh, for some of these. I don't know if you guys have one of these. Um, they are very sharp, so if you do and your parents are okay with you using it, you gotta be very, very careful. Um, but this cutting mat is great because you can cut stuff on top of it without having to worry about damaging your surfaces underneath. Um, so the first attachment, meaning just like a way that I'm going to, you know, put the cardboard together is, um, something I'm going to do with a toilet paper roll. You can also do this with a paper towel roll and I'm going to attach it to a piece of this cardboard and this is called the flange. 
For the flange, I will be using cardboard, uh, toilet paper roll, and one of my favorite tools, one of my favorite art tools, a hot glue gun. These can also be a little bit dangerous as this heats up and gets pretty warm. Uh, mine isn't on right now, uh, that's why I was able to touch it. But um, this is great because it glues something down and then it dries very quickly and it is very strong, okay? It's a very strong hold. Um, when you're working with cardboard, if you want whatever you're making to last, I would recommend always using some kind of glue, uh, whether it's this or regular, regular white glue, instead of tape. Tape is not going to last very long, okay? So to make this simple attachment, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your scissors and you are going to just cut um, just about an inch or so um, up the up the cardboard tube, um, maybe about an inch apart, in, all around, okay? So I did one, two, three, four, five cuts, okay? And now these areas that I cut, you just fold them up like this. See, I'm just taking it and kind of peeling it back, kind of like I'm peeling a banana or something, a candy bar wrapper, whatever. You're gonna peel it back, make sure they're all folded down and that they're all around the same level. And then this should fit, or should sit right on top of your piece of cardboard. Just uh, pretty flash and uh, flush and flat, okay? And then I would glue on top of these and put it down, and then I would have a nice fastened piece of cardboard. And you can make a tree or a house or whatever you're making um, out of this, uh, but that's one way to affix a cardboard tube to a piece of cardboard. Once again, that is called the flange. All right, now that my hot glue gun is all warmed up, I'm going to show you guys how to make something called an L brace. Um, and you guess it, that's because it's in the shape of a letter L. Um, so if you ever want to fold your cardboard uh, like this and keep it folded in that, um, in that L shape for whatever reason, maybe you're making a box or a house or whatever. Again, these are just different kinds of fasteners for whatever kind of art you're making. Um, but you don't want it to keep kind of opening up like this one is doing, what you can do is take another piece of cardboard, a smaller piece, fold it also in half, just like you did the first one, and then glue it on the inside so that it'll keep it nice and tight, okay? Um, and like I said, you can use any type of glue for this. I'm using hot glue because it's quick. Uh, but if you can totally use Elmer's glue or whatever, you know, other regular school glue, um, it will just take a little bit longer to dry, okay? So I'm gonna glue these together and I'm gonna make sure that they're nice and tight. I'm really shoving this little piece down into the center so that um, when it does dry, it's gonna hold this bigger piece really in that L shape and keep it from kind of like spreading, spreading open again, okay? This is just gonna make the fold a little bit stronger. I'll hold that for a little bit. And then when I let go, it should be just, just that much stronger, okay? And like the shape implies, this is called an L brace, okay? Next, I'm gonna show you how to make something that we did when we made our trees in an earlier episode. And this is called slotting. This is called slotting your cardboard, okay? So if I wanna combine these two pieces of cardboard, uh, kind of like this, like in an X or a plus shape, uh, just like we do with the trees, what I'm gonna do is cut a line halfway, halfway down both of these pieces, because they're about the same size, and then through these little slots that I've cut, these little channels, I can put these two pieces of cardboard together. It takes a little bit of pushing. And now these are attached and I didn't even need any glue or tape or anything like that. Uh, this isn't the prettiest one because uh, this cardboard is pretty thick, but you can use this to obviously make things stand up. You can use it to make a building or a tree or a, or a person like we did in an earlier episode. Um, the possibilities are, are kind of endless with this one, but it's an interesting and useful way to put cardboard together, okay? Okay, next I'm gonna show you something similar to the last one. This one is called slot and tab, okay? So just like before, we are going to uh, make a slot, okay? Make something for another piece of cardboard to fit inside of, but this time we're going to cut a tab, okay? And so what I mean by that is it's gonna have a little, this piece is gonna have a little bit sticking out that is going to go into this piece of cardboard. So if I wanna combine these like this, here's what I'm gonna do. 
I'm going to um, draw the piece, the pieces that I'm going to cut out. So these pieces right here, I'm going to cut off, and that's going to leave me with a tab. Hold on, I'll show you. So as you can see, this little, these areas that I've drawn over, I'm going to cut those off, and then I'm going to have a tab, which again is just like a little piece of cardboard that sticks out. Okay, I'm going to cut these off now. All right, now I'm going to measure. So I'm trying to, you know, put this so that it kind of inserts into this piece of cardboard like this. Uh, so I'm going to measure how long my tab is, and I'm going to make a hole about that big. All right, so that's how long my little tab needs, or my slot needs to be, right? Um, you can, if you're very careful, you can cut this using scissors, uh, kind of like this. Uh, I would ask for your parents' help on this. Uh, or if you have an X-Acto knife, a craft knife, and you were allowed to use it, you can also use that, okay? I have this, so I'm just going to stick it through the cardboard and cut this slot, okay? There we go, all the way through. Now I can insert the slot into the tab. Looks like I need to make my slot just a hair bigger. And it should, with a little bit of force, it should fit uh, right in. That, uh, that tab should go right inside the slot, and uh, this is just uh, yet another way to attach cardboard to another piece of cardboard uh, without uh, glue or tape. This is called slot and tab. All right, now I'm gonna show you a technique called cardboard sewing, at least that's what I call it, which is where you make a bunch of holes in your cardboard and then attach two pieces using um, some wire. I'm just gonna stretch out these paper clips and use this for it, okay? So you can make a hole using a hole punch like I have here. Um, like this, right near the edge. But if you don't have that, you can also make a hole by just opening up your scissors and like I said very carefully before with an adult you can um, kind of just twist uh, until you get a hole right there with your scissors. I think this is a better method anyway because you want a smaller hole for this to work, okay? So I'm just gonna make um, holes all the way down this side and then I'm gonna make holes in the same places all the way down this side. Notice that I'm keeping the holes close to the edge of the cardboard uh, so that they can really fit together, okay? All right, now that I have my holes made, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my wire, uh, undo it, because it was a paper clip. You can, you can use any kind of wire here. Um, I've even got a little piece of wire like this. This is the kind of um, wires you might uh, use to like, you know, tie your, your bread together or whatever. Um, so I'm also going to uh, trim this a little bit and use this for part of it, because it's this kind of wire is a little bit easier to move than the paper clip wire. Um, but I'll do this one first. So what you can do is put the two pieces together at any angle that you want, and then feed the um, feed the paper clip or the wire through both of the holes. So through one hole, through the other, and then you can either keep going and really, you know, like you're sewing, you can like go in and out of the holes. Uh, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to do each one individually. So now the paper clip is through both of them. I'm going to bring it up here, bring it up, and then twist it, okay? And then uh, if I had them, I would, I would cut this with some wire cutters. Uh, let's see if the scissors can do it. I don't want to ruin my scissors, but if they can. Nah, not really. Not quite strong enough. Uh, but now this is connected through a piece of wire. I'm gonna do the same thing with this uh, smaller one because this is a little bit easier. I'm gonna cut this into smaller pieces as well, okay? So now I can take this other wire, push it through the hole uh, in the first cardboard, push it through the hole in the second cardboard, and then just like I did with the, with the paper clip wire, get that out of the way. Just like I did with the paper clip wire, I'm gonna bring these two pieces together and just twist them, okay? I'm just gonna hold them together and twist them until they're nice and tight. And do the same thing here. You can push this through both holes of the cardboard. Bring the two ends together, twist them. And then I have 
uh, looks kind of like a little book or something, uh, but you can use this technique, this kind of cardboard sewing, to attach uh, cardboard in a lot of different ways. You could use string or yarn, it doesn't have to be wire, uh, but this is one way to make kind of a, a nice strong cardboard attachment. Okay. Now I'm going to show you uh, two more methods for working with cardboard. These aren't for attaching cardboard. This is just for um, like moving it around and making it do the things you want to do. So cardboard is pretty thick. Um, it's pretty strong because it is made. It has a bunch of different layers. So most cardboard is what we call corrugated cardboard. So if you look closely, corrugated cardboard has um, two layers of, you know, two outer layers of paper. On, on the outside and on the inside there's this kind of wavy pattern okay and that wavy thing means it's corrugated you might see uh, or hear somebody say something about corrugated metal uh, it looks the same it looks kind of like wavy like that and uh, this because of these layers um, cardboard moves and bends and folds in kind of a weird way and uh, so if you want to make a curve or something that looks kind of organic out of something like cardboard that is very rigid and very strong, you need a couple special techniques. So the first one is called scoring. Uh, and when you score something, that basically means that you are um, cutting it or, or denting it before you make a fold. So if I want to fold this cardboard uh, right here along this line, it doesn't always fold in a straight line because like I said before, cardboard is very strong. So before I make the fold, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take something, um, I'll just use these scissors. Uh, you could use the dull side of a pencil or a ruler or something like this. But what I'm going to do is basically just push down in a line of where I want this to go. I'm not necessarily trying to cut it. I'm definitely not trying to cut all the way through, but I'm just scoring a line because I want to fold along this line. So I'm just making a dent with the scissors along that line. Again, I could use a ruler or something too, or even the dull edge of my X-Acto knife, okay? And so now when I fold it, it's that much easier, right? It's, you can see that it kind of folds on its own. Uh, so scoring makes folding uh, in precise ways, in, in very specific ways, a lot easier, okay? So that's called scoring. The next thing I wanna show you is uh, massaging, okay? So like I said, cardboard has this inner layer, it can be a little weird, but if you want this um, flat piece of cardboard to have a nice, nice curve to it, uh, it doesn't really work that well. See how I'm trying to make a curve right now and it just kind of bends into these corners? So if you massage the cardboard first, and usually I do this with a ruler, if you really just like rub it, you know, push down really hard and rub it, I'm gonna do this on both sides. You can get a much nicer, even curve. Um, sometimes also, if you're going for a curve, you can roll it up like this, and this will kind of soften the cardboard and um, get rid of some of those hard angles that we don't wanna see when we're trying to make a nice, smooth, even curve. And then after that, look, I've got a nice, little arch, okay? So whatever project you're using that you might need a little arch, little curved piece of cardboard, uh, massaging it is a very good way to achieve that. All right, so we did the flange, which is when you um, spread out the bottom of the toilet paper roll and glue it down. We did the L brace, which is when you put a smaller piece of cardboard inside the fold that you've made to make it a little bit stronger. The slot, the slot and tab, the uh, scoring, I showed you guys how to do some scoring. Oh, almost forgot. The cardboard sewing with a little bit of wire and um, the massaging the cardboard, which is one of my um, favorite and most used cardboard techniques. There are lots and lots of other ways to work with cardboard and my advice to you is to go online and look for some more as well as just experimenting on your own because you will always uh, be able to figure things out uh, by yourself. All right, so let's go see how Sam is doing in New York. Hey guys, it's Sam. Uh, I'm back here at my studio in Brooklyn, working on a couple new projects. Um, and I just wanted to say that it's been really awesome being able to talk to you guys about art, about creativity, uh, and about what the creative process means to me. Uh, I know for myself that, you know, ever since I was a little kid until now, like, art making has been so important to me because it helps me to understand myself, it helps me to make sense of the world around me, um, and it's led me to a career that I find really personal and fulfilling. Um, I've been seeing the projects you guys are doing and I've been constantly blown away by your technique, your commitment, 
and uh, most importantly, the way that you guys are thinking outside of the box has been really awesome. So I really hope you guys can keep that energy up moving forward because I think more than ever with everything that's going on in our country right now, um, it's really important that we use art, that we use creativity to express ourselves, to make our voices heard, uh, and also to um, understand what all this means to us personally. You know, we're taking in so much information every day and using art as an outlet is a really, really great way to uh, process that information and figure out how you feel about it and figure out how to make sense of it for yourself. Um, so, you know, art means different things to everyone. So you could be writing, you could be painting, you could be taking photos, you could be crafting out of cardboard. It can be anything. As long as you are flexing that creative muscle, you can't really go wrong. So I would just love to encourage you guys to keep exploring, keep experimenting, uh, find a creative medium that speaks to you personally, um, and keep creating. I just can't wait to see what you guys do next, and I hope you have a really great summer. So, see you later. Okay guys, I hope you've enjoyed watching these crafting with cardboard videos. I hope you've been following along with the projects and maybe even doing some of your own. Uh, but most of all, I hope that you guys have learned and realized that you can make art out of whatever is around you. And that as long as you are expressing yourself with your body, your voice, your words, your mind, your hands, whatever, um, you are all artists and you are all extremely near and dear to my heart, which means that I love you and I miss you guys. Um, so for our last goodbye song, I thought I would add some words. I'll be here for school next year.